years. Uh, you know, as a kid growing up, yeah. I wonder how in the world we were able to play baseball in Baltimore. But a great municipal baseball in this town. Uh, I got a wonderful start here. These people are baseball people. They're sports fans. And they come from far and wide to come to baseball. And you got a great rival here with the fans. And I think we have a lot of people come from Toronto. They come from ball games. Well, I've been actually. We're playing for the World Series. Yeah, very good. And uh, what I'm saying is that it's not that far distant. We're in the middle of our ball game. We're in the middle of our ball game. You would not draw Philadelphia. No, <laughs> no, you never know. But you know, you you come to a lot of these uh, senior league, uh, not senior league, but uh, alumni or old oh, yeah, fans. Yeah, yeah, you really must have some great memories. Thank you, other some of these guys. I don't have lots, but I see you. Hey, I have great memories. The first time was probably in the uh, cocktail bar. And, uh, <laughs> Before the game, but it's really yeah, yeah, tough to get out there. And the old timers are getting awfully young. They're all younger than I am. I remember when Casey Singer was the manager of the Mets in 1965. You were my first major league pitching coach. Uh, I always hoped that I could play in the big leagues long enough to be invited to an old timers game. But I can't believe you were teammates again. We had great talk. It's super. And, uh, you know, there's no camaraderie like baseball. The guys, you're right. The stories. Uh, the home runs get longer, the, the fastball gets faster, the eyes get bigger, but it's all fun. When I gave up my first grand slam, did you really tell me, tell you got to throw a ball real hard for it to go that far? I did, Chuck. That's right. I also said, Chuck, you don't hit the back. You don't catch the ball. Okay, here at uh, Pilot Stadium in Buffalo, New York, I'm Chuck McGraw. That was wild. You look fantastic. I feel great. I tell you what, it's going to be a fun night for us up here. Any particular memories of you see somebody here you haven't seen? Well, you know what? The thing that we try to impress on our young people, you know, there are 20 million kids who want to play big league baseball. I'm only 600 up here. The average big league career is 4.7 years. And the fun that you can have playing the game of baseball, I mean, with guys, against guys, and I think something like this, I think it's great for baseball because we are promoting it as a family game. It also gives us a chance to renew old acquaintances and old enemies and foes under a little normal condition. Well, it's great to see you guys. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. From the Baltimore Orioles, 23 years with Baltimore, Hall of Famer, number five, Brooks Robinson. over Cleveland Alexander lost one year in World War I, where he was having over 30 games a year. And uh, so I was figuring out, you heard me say a minute ago, who the won their 300 game sooner. As right now, as far as I can see, the encyclopedia that been for World War II, I don't want my 300th game at the age of 30 or 31. In 150, uh, in, a, uh, in 162 game season, it would have been at 30, to 160, 154 game season, 100. But that had nothing to do with anything. I proud of my military record. I did the job. I no hero. The heroes, as far as I'm concerned, have never returned to this country. They're on the battlefields of Europe, or the depths of the Pacific, or the Atlantic, and uh, uh, they're back home and loss of life, not loss of life, loss of limbs. And uh, I know a lot of them. There were 274 major league players in military service out of, out of 400, and the only major league player to ever lose his life in World War II was from Cleveland, Ohio. He played for Washington. Look like that thing coming at you in his prime, and Nolan Ryan pitch when you well, nothing. As I said again, it was a perception, no perception. Uh -huh. It was just the way we'd see the ball coming in. And it. As I said, I enjoyed. Anytime you have a fastball pitcher, you enjoy working that kind of pitcher. But you get a knuckleball pitcher; they're the worst to work. There's the balls bouncing all over the place. Pretty amazing. He could conceivably be here today at this old timers this, game. Yes, for for his age and all that stuff. The only thing is, he's such an amazing individual. Keep himself in such good shape that uh, you know, Lord knows how many years he can go yet. Excellent, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, you are. Sir. Uh, I've always respected Nolan Ryan's ability. I always thought he was a dumb son of a bitch. I think that he finally learned how to pitch last year. He's probably more accomplished now than he ever has been in his career. Why do you think he was the dumb son of a bitch? Because he was obsessed with striking people out and he forgot about how winning games. And with his ability, I think I'd have won 600 with his ability. Now, 
Nolan is a credit to baseball. I think his habits, a uh, clean living guy. Uh, he certainly is remarkable that he's been able to throw as hard as he is at this age. And then uh, he's thrown six no-hitters you know, and a whole bunch of one-hitters so that he has amazing ability. And it just amazes me that he's only been like a little bit above a 500 pitcher all this time. There you go. Don't have to work How do you mean the glide step? Slide step. Oh, you pitch well. Well, those guys have been big. Big, big. If you're going to say it, I'd say if you want to play this game and conduct yourself, um, doing it the way Nolan Wright did is, uh, is not a bad idea. Uh, some people uh, don't realize in the game of baseball that you don't really get to show your respect for opposing players during the course of your career. And now you sit around the clubhouse and you hear these guys uh, talking with almost reverence to one another because there's a great respect that built up among them when they were in their uh, playing career. What happened as I look back, I was in total awe of the World Series, particularly the first one, because you know when you're kids, you dream about it and you go through your entire career, you dream about what happened, and then it happens, and the whole sports world actually shuts down and they're focusing in on two teams. And it's uh, it's just a tremendous thing. I remember the first day that I walked, walked out the batting practice, and there was three or 400 uh, reporters around the cage, and that's when it hit me. Uh, but for many, everything has a touch. That was this year, in this moment, in 79, I was so relaxed, I knew what to look for, not that it meant anything, but he had taught me the formula for winning, and, and we stayed with the particular plan, and I just knew that certain things happen that uh, we have a good chance of doing something. I have more fun. Well, I, I kind of agree with you on that. It's uh, somewhat overrated, I think. In fact, if you have chemistry in Baltimore, we have people that uh, you can trust each other to do things together and want to do things together. A sister, boost. Baltimore uh, Orioles star also uh, with the Washington Post Dodgers, number 26, We just have an awful lot of fun. We put a lot of petty things aside because we had something in mind that was to win. You know, there, was a, there was no accident for our team to win. We do that so we can have the kind of fun and still have the second time at bat. So I don't Hall think it was anything that I would have to say that I was particularly responsible for. You no, know, uh, there were some things that other guys helped me with as well. So uh, it was one family, that's for sure. Who was the head of the family? Look back at your career record. Would you think that it would be broken anytime soon? Did you ever look at it and think, ah, you know? I really didn't know because, yeah. uh, again, we ran and uh, the Cardinals were better running. Uh, we yeah. ran into become freedom in the 70s. And at the end of the year, I had 118 stolen bases. That's 35 years old. And I still like a 10 year old horse in the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> so I equate that to that. So I got a race charge only because, again, how to steal a base, the procedure of stealing bases was not available when I came out of high school. If you look at Ricky Henderson in, in the 70s and 80s, yeah, base stealing is now being taught in minor league ball. The last time it was taught in minor league ball was 1910. So that it has resurged in a consequence. Now you're being able to be taught. Was there anyone instrumental in your development as a base player? I no, know what you I just guess, talked about, but yeah, there wasn't. I, I guess Johnny King, uh, the manager who uh, said to me, if you want to play regular steel bases, and ask him, how do you steal a base? He said, you go back and you find out, and you come back and tell me. Uh, well, uh, that's how it got started with me. The thing is, uh, it, the fans seem to enjoy it. You know, that's what we're really, it's a good cause, and the fans seem to enjoy it. Uh, you know, I think that if you if you ask most of us, do we really like to go out and play the ball game, we'd probably tell you this would be a great affair if we didn't have to play the game. <laughs>